Hello, this is Anne Margaret with Emotions to Evolve. Today I will be continuing reading from a book titled If the Buddha Dated, a handbook for finding love on a spiritual path. This in particular is chapter 20. Experience the spacious mind. Observe your limiting beliefs about how people meet. The most important prerequisite for finding a satisfying, intimate relationship is wanting one. Wholeheartedly, genuinely, earnestly, single-mindedly, and without reservation. Susan Page, if I'm so wonderful, why am I still single? I urge people who are bewildered about why they haven't attracted a lover to explore the negative messages they are transmitting. Many people have a litany of reasons why they haven't met anyone yet. I'm afraid of being hurt again. I pick out the wrong people. There are no good people out there. I'm too old, too young, too fat, too smart, too stupid, too poor, too rich, too opinionated, too passionate, too messed up, too evolved, too boring. Make a list of all your reasons and then remember they are just that reasons or excuses. Listen to your ego protest and then imagine what kind of spaciousness would emerge if your internal Greek chorus would take an intermission or if you would stop taking all these thoughts so seriously. To get a feeling for the messages you are transmitting, you might write a mock personals ad based on the negative things you are saying about yourself. Overweight male, boring, opinionated, tends to get dependent on women, seeks beautiful, talented, loving female to shore up my ego and fill up my emptiness. Woman, 52, freaked out after being over 50, Worried about my figure, probably more intelligent than most people, although I've had a string of painful relationships. Need unreliable man to criticize me and leave after a short time. These mock ads may sound ridiculous, but whatever we say to ourselves, we are transmitting to others. As surely as if we walked around wearing a sandwich board sign saying, Hi, I'm a mess. Come love me. We need to remember desperation is different from delighting in the idea of having someone to walk beside us. When we are extremely needy or want someone to fill up our empty life, we will tend to push people away. Even then, needy people do find partners, although it is usually someone equally insecure or troubled. People find lovers when they are afraid, when they are open, when they are happy, when they are sad, when they are sick, when they are well, when they are looking, and when they are enjoying single life. To some degree, it is inexplicable why we meet someone at a given time. In the meantime, however, we can make a concerted effort to find a partner, but not be attached to the outcome. The more you meet a variety of people, Take part in activities and put yourself where other single people are, the more likely you are to meet someone. It's the law of averages. When we buy shoes, look for a job, ponder a career change, invest money, or buy a home, we are taught to be systematic and put effort into making a good decision. The same is true for meeting a partner, particularly for those over 30 who don't automatically meet single people as often as most of us did in our early 20s. You can let friends know you're looking for someone and you can use ads and dating services or join interest groups. Most local papers list community activities, volunteer work and various types of support groups. I've known people who met at craft fairs, on a camping trip, at a parents without partners meeting, at work, through elder hostels, Singles, tennis groups, lesbian mothers groups, vocational courses, classes, coffee houses, karaoke bars, sailing clubs, or religious organizations, to name a few. The point is, you have to be out in the world to meet people. Occasionally, there are exceptions. One friend of mine met her 
future husband when he came to hang wallpaper in her house, but we can't count on that. Likewise, we can be open and alert to possible partners without being constantly preoccupied or scanning every event for the one. It's a subtle dance of letting go and being open. It's a process, a form of faith, where we play a part but we're not totally in charge. Sometimes we don't find someone because it just doesn't happen. Other times it might reflect unconscious ambivalence. Think of your self-defeating thoughts as a fence around you, marking where your compassion ends and your harsh judgments begin. To free yourself, imagine stepping beyond the fence into a vast field that goes on for as far as you can see. Allow a breeze to thin out your thoughts and blow them away. And notice that you are part of the vast energy that connects us all. So that is a nice short little chapter, Experience the Spacious Mind. And um, especially about what you are transmitting outward. Uh, one suggestion that I have had great success for clients and friends is to join organizations that you already have an interest in. For instance, if you like hiking, then find a local hiking group and chances are you will meet someone. If you like gardening, join a gardening group, take a cooking class, do things that make you feel great and you're expanding in your own way. And you can just about guarantee that if you don't meet somebody to date, you will at the very least meet other people that have similar or if not the same interests that you do so that you are expanding your own circle of friends along with the opportunities to actually meet someone that's going to have the same type of interests. A particular one, especially if you were newer in a city, is to look up a website called meetup.com. www.meetup.com. They have all kinds of organizations, truly everything from the everyday to the bizarre. You'll be able to find sort of a local chapter and participate. So some are charged, some are not, but definitely worth a look since we don't really have newspapers so much. Or you can look on Facebook and see what kind of local events there are in the area. You might be surprised. Even doing this signals to the universe that you are wanting to meet someone. And uh, it happens rather quickly. Now as to who you meet, that's a whole other issue depending on those transmitting emotions that you are sending out, uh, just to be prepared and do your inner work, all will be well.